Hi guys, I hope you can hear me okay. I'm, uh, I'm just messing around with my screens, trying to get everything uh, working away. Now, uh, hopefully I am live and you can see my face on the screen. If you could just let me know that you can hear me okay and the picture's good. Excellent. In that case, uh, I'll get right on with it. So, what's the video all about? I'm going to tie, hopefully, four patterns, but I'll see how time goes. I don't want to keep you all too long. Maybe um, an hour, and I hope to tie four still water patterns during that time. I also want to talk about the tactics for fishing the various patterns that I'm going to try. So, what I'll do is, as I'm tying the flies, as before, I won't be able to look at the chat. I'll stop at various points. If you have any questions about what I'm saying or what I'm doing, uh, please just let me know. So I'm going to try switching to the other camera now and hopefully you'll see the first fly that I'm going to tie. If somebody could just tell me that, that that's appeared on the screen. Excellent. Thanks very much, Nigel. So what you see in the vise is a little mini snake fly here and... Uh, uh, I've been fishing snake flies for not very long actually and the, the reason for that is, uh, as most of you will know, my background is in competition angling and snakes aren't allowed in competition. Uh, you've got prescribed lengths of flies and I never really had much use for them. But since packing it up four or five years ago, maybe even longer actually, I've started to get into the virtues of fishing the snake flies and uh, they can be really effective especially in the winter months where the trout are maybe not feeding as hard as they would be in the summer months. So let's get on and tie this fly. I'll just take this out of the vise. Now I've left, um, as you can see, um, I've left the front hook on and that was just to show you in the vise. I will clip this off. Uh, I've got a pair of pliers here that I do all my clipping with. Now I'm not going to do it now because the last time I'd done it, the hook pinged around the room and nearly had my eye out. So uh, I'll just put that to the side for the moment. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is add in the tail of the fly. And the hook I'm going to use for that is a Hanak H200. It's a heavy wired hook. This one's at size eight. Now, a lot of people prefer to use much smaller hooks than the tail of their fly. I like the weight of this um, heavier hook and as you can see it's barbless um, if you want to put a barbed hook on then a Kamazan B175 would probably do the job for you. Now the thread I'm going to use this evening, uh, for this fly anyway, is uh, Nano Silk. It's at 6 aught or 1000 D if you like. It's from Semplify and as if you watch my other time videos I'm going to add a touch of super glue to the shank of the hook. Now, there's going to be a lot of toing and throwing with uh, this live stream because the simple fact of the matter is my eyes are not what they used to be. So I am going to remove my seeing glasses and here's, here's the crux of it. I need these to read your messages, which I really appreciate, but I need the binos to tie the flies. So I'm just going to swap over now, put the glasses somewhere I can find them and that's much better. I can see what I'm doing now. So I put some super glue on the shank of the hook and I'm going to bring it all the way back to approximately where a barb would be. Now at this point I'm going to add a little bit of wax to my thread. Now there's lots of different ways of tying snake flies and when I first started out I was tying snake flies that were um, around 10 centimeters long and they worked fine enough but as I've started to refine my snake fishing if there's such a thing as refined snake fishing I've found the much smaller ones uh, I get a much better hookup rate so what I'm using for my my snake main body if you like is a it's a muskrat zonker strip three millimeters 
and it's a natural color. Now I've already cut a strip of that and it's approximately two and a half inches or six centimeters if you like if you're a metric bunny and the first thing I want to do is just remove the very tail end. So what I've got is a little uh, tag here and I'm going to lay the zonka strip down on top of the shank like so and I'm going to catch that in he says after three attempts well I hope you've all had a great Christmas uh, I've had a relaxing couple of days unfortunately um, my plans to go fishing today were sent awry with the weather gods uh, I was supposed to be on the river test but uh, that didn't happen so here we are at least the silver lining if you like I've had the time to set up and fret over this live stream now for the connecting strip I'm using some fly line backing now this stuff is is much thicker than a uh, cart braid which I know a lot of people prefer now fly fishing itself is a compromise and uh, this is certainly a compromise so what are we compromising here we're compromising movement because this is a little thicker I'm going to get a little less thick um, a little less movement in my fly here but the win for it is I'll get far less tangles and I'll be able to the fly will last a lot longer you know when as you're casting this now first thing I want to do is go down through the eye you don't want to come up because that will make it go in fact if I show you so if I was to put this up and catch it in it would be much better actually <laughs> Sorry, I've got that back to front. So I'm going to bring that round up through the eye. It's the other way you don't want to go. And what I want to do with this, I've got about an inch and a half. Now you could measure it, but if you tie a lot of these, and I do, uh, you get you get a feeling for what an inch and a half looks like, and that's pretty bang on. So I'm going to catch that in, like so. And because I'm using the nano silk, I can really clamp down on this. Now what I'm going to do is come in with my scissors and remove a little bit of the tag. Now, still got a bit here, that can be for the next fly. And then I'm going to come all the way back. And I'm really putting a lot of pressure onto this. Uh, a lot of people say to me, oh, won't it come out when you catch a fish? Uh, and that's never happened yet so I'm not overly worried I used to worry about it myself actually what if you caught a big fish and uh, and your connecting braid slipped out but it never happens so I brought my thread all the way to the front now I'm going to pause there I'm going to swap the gags so I can see if you've got any questions thus far Oh, I'm glad it's working. <laughs> I'm glad it's still working actually because I know uh, the last time I've done it it worked for like five or so minutes and then it, it, it went all peak tom and uh, I was devastated with that but it looks like it's uh, working a treat tonight. Uh, would heavy mono work? Uh, yeah I, I dare say it would work uh, Mick. I've never tried it but it's something to think about for sure. Um, Evening Chris, okay, there, there doesn't seem to be any other questions unless I'm missing one there. So I'll get back to carrying on with the fly. So the next thing then, I'm going to bring my muskrat strip over the top. And I'm just going to measure where it's going to go. Try and make a little gap. Now, if you haven't got muskrat, obviously, normal grey squirrel, squirrel, squirrel <laughs> will work just as well. So let's just get that about right. Yep, that's looking okay. I'm just going to damp it down with my fingers. 
and then I'm going to pull it out of the way. Now before I bring that over and tie that little bit in, I'm going to get a little bit of super glue onto the top of the shank of the hook. Now if you were of a mind to, you can add some dub into this just to make it look a, a little bit neater. I've found it's uh, irrelevant really. Um, it works just as well plain. So I've got that on and I'm going to bring a couple of wraps of thread over the top. Once I've got it in two or three times. Sorry about that, my wife just pointed out that I haven't put <laughs> I haven't put the other camera on so hopefully uh, that'll be popping on your screen now. I'll just check. Um, Robert, yeah, I've just uh, gone back to the things, my, that's my stage manager just been in and told me I've not put the fly camera back on. Um, Robert, the, the reason I take off the front hook is I think the movement's completely different. If you leave both hooks on, that it, it changes completely the movement of the fly. Not only that, um, as I'm sure you're aware, I practice a lot of catch and release. And uh, if you've got two hooks, you could really damage the fish, so I tend to to cut that hook away so I get the movement and then I'm only releasing one hook from the fish. Now the good news folks is I'm hoping to get my eyes fixed this year and I won't be having to do all this carry on that I'm currently doing. <laughs> Swapping glasses and stuff but old age it comes to us all. So I'm going to come to the front just in where the eye is and then I would usually use a whip finish, but I'm just going to use my fingers on this occasion. Put a three turn whip finish in. And catch that in. Now, at 1000D, you don't want to try and snap this thread with your fingers. You should um, be always using scissors or a knife. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit of... glue, tim of whip finish and then I can take this out the vise and bring in my second hook or the shank that I'm going to use. Now I'll just pause there and see if there are any other questions. Jane you have a cross to bear. I think you mean bear, Nigel. That she doesn't have a cross to bear. <laughs> She'd cross a room for a beer. <laughs> okay, there's no more questions about the fly, so uh, let's get on with the front end. So what I've got here is an H970 barbless hook. This one's at size 10. It's on a heavy wire, and just get one out of the packet and clamp it into the vise. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do with uh, with this one is attach my eyes. Now what I use for the eyes oops. Sorry, I've only got a small workbench here and my tools are starting to slip off the edge. I use this and, and you get it from B&Q, it's toilet chain um, for light switches and I tend to use uh, the old pliers here to snip off a bit which I've already done. So I'm just going to move that out of the way now and again I'm still on the 1000D or the, the 6 aught if you like and I want to add a little bit of super glue just to the shank here. Now as for fishing these flies, um, I've heard all manner of different techniques. Somebody told me to even suspend them under a bung which I find a wee bit hard to believe. I've never done that myself but 
I'm told it can be very effective on its day and I, I don't doubt it. So I'm going to bring my thread up to about three millimeters before the eye and I'm just going to snip away my rat's tail there. Now I've got my bead here and I'm going to catch that in quite well back from the eye. Get a couple of figure of eights in, excuse my fingers. And I'll just get that locked into place. Now what I tend to do when I'm tying up a lot of these, I'll do this stage first and then I'll put it to the side to dry. Uh, I'll do lots, well lots, I only tie about five of the same pattern uh, at the most and once I've got five of these done I super glue them up and leave them to dry so I'm just going to add a touch of super glue to the top there and just invert my vise and get a little touch on the bottom like so, okay. I don't want them moving about, which they currently are. So I'm going to come another couple of turns towards the middle of the shank and then I'm going to show up my tail and my fly. Now I know through experience that that's about an inch and a half and that's what I want to catch. I'm going to lay it up to the, the, the hook shank and that's a wee bit long I'm going to come back just a couple of turns and then I can just adjust it to my heart's content remember at the end at the end state of this fly I want it to be around six centimeters which is two and a half inches in old money And I want to try and keep that on top of the shank as much as possible. And I've got it well bit down. You can really get a lot of pressure on this. Now, if you're off a belts and braces disposition, what you can do is slip that through the eye. like so and trap it in underneath now this is not required really I've got to say I've never found any need to be doing this uh, it's just that I had that extra bit left over tying it in properly will stop any movement. So I'm going to come all the way to the butt of the fly and then I'm going to let my thread just come down. I've probably got about five inches of thread out. Now I'm going to pause there just to see if there's any questions and make sure the video is still working of course. Right, Reese. I'll try uh, talking, uh, talking through how I would fish it. Yeah, in a sec. Them nano silks are fantastic and very tough. Yeah, Mick. Uh, I yeah. Uh, I don't exclusively tie with them, uh, as you're gonna find out when when I, I come on to the next flies. But uh, Chris, you you know fine well what a bung is. <laughs> Do you find the eyes cause it to retrieve upside down? No, Steve. I've never had that problem. Uh, what I find it does is, is it swims like that in a motion with these dumbbell eyes. These are quite big actually. But um, so Reese asked asked about the, uh, the the way I like to fish them now in winter, uh, and I suppose you're on here because you're all anglers. And and I suppose the general rule of thumb is 
that you want to slow everything down in winter. Um, you know, the fish are a lot more lethargic, but what I would say to you is if you're fishing small stocked ponds, the fish don't behave like natural fish do. And I have enormous success um, weaking these back with a roly-poly technique uh, as fast as I can. You can't pull it fast enough. You've got to remember that stocked fish, they're living in pens, they're used to being very competitive. And if it's a well-stocked lake, something whizzing past their eyes will definitely get their attention. So my first port of call is always a roly-poly. Now, after the initial foray is over, uh, I usually use a pink one of these to start with uh, because I've never seen anything like it and you, you get three or four quick fish um, wheeking a pink one past. But then once uh, the initial foray is over and you want to slow everything down, this more natural type one um, works a treat. So let's get on and finish the fly off. So while I've been leathering there, um, what's happened is my nano silk has hopefully flattened itself out. And what I want to do is add two sections to the body here. I'm going to be adding some uh, trout stalkers. This is natural pale possum. I've already got a little bit out of the packet here, ready to slip in to a dubbing loop. So I'm going to just use my dubbing needle here to open up my thread like so and then I can add in my possum. Now as I was saying there so initially roly-poly once, once the uh, part is over something a wee bit more subtle like this and I would try different methods with it. So I'm not one for doing the same thing uh, unless it's working, like a slow figure of eight. You know, if, if that's how they want it, I'm happy enough to do it. But generally, when you're trying to find out how, how the fish want to take the fly, I find the best way is to mix up your retrieve as much as possible. So I'm just gonna twist that up a little more and I'm going to come in and I'm going to run this up just like a rib all the way up to the top now once I've got past the the dubbing what I want to do is get several more turns in and then I want to just start flattening out again because I do want another uh, material going in there so uh, while the thread's doing its thing what I'm going to be using the other material is some uh, Simplify ice dubbing. I don't know if you how well you'll see that. It's, they've got a selection of them, and the one I'm interested in is the gold. Now, when you take this out the packet here, it comes out in big long strips. And what I've done uh, prior to coming onto the camera is I've just ripped it up with my fingers, and I've created like a dubbing. And I'll just put that away. So, and I've put it into a dubbing clip. Just makes it a little bit easier to get it into the loop that I'm going to create. So, let's see how that's coming. Uh, it's still working away there. Just give it a little encouragement, going the right way. And it's not long, flattening itself out again. Use the uh, flat of the dubbing needle just to try and encourage it. One of the reasons I use the 1000D, apart from the fact it's nice and heavy for biting down onto your connecting, is uh, it's much easier to split. So now I've got that split, I can insert my dubbing clip here, catch that in, and then again I can spin it up. I hope you have all had a good Christmas and uh, some of you have managed to get out for a bit of fishing. Uh, the weather's not been very kind to us this year over the Christmas period and uh, I've certainly not managed to get out myself since uh, I visited uh, the Y. But that's just how it goes I suppose. Between the weather and the hangovers. 
Okay, once I've got that spun up, you can see it's quite a wiry sort of look to it. Uh, I'm going to catch that all the way in. I don't want to come over the top. I want to keep it this side of the eyes. I'm going to bring that over and then I'm going to bring it to the front of the hook. That's looking pretty good. And then what I want to do is bring my wrap over. Now measuring it out, because I'm doing such a short one here, it's dead easy to get the right length. You don't want it too, too you don't want this, but you also don't want that. It's got to be just right. So take your time and once you've got to the bit you need, just pull your material over. Yeah. It's just uh, and it's always worth it. It's a bit like um, joinery. Uh, measure twice, cut once. And it's the same with this fly. So just make sure you get it bang on before you do any cutting. So yeah, going back to the retrieve, uh, I would um, more often than not incorporate some long pools uh, mixed in with some figure of eighting and some short pools. Now before I catch that, I'm happy I've got the right distance, I'm just going to get a little bit of wax onto my thread. Bring it over the top of the eyes. couple of turns that way, a couple of turns the other way and then I can really start to lash that down. Now what I used to do with this fly was um, I'd add some of that gold dubbing into the head uh, and that, that worked okay but what I found is a nice big black head uh, works better. I don't know if it's the the difference between the uh, the contrast with the black and the, the gold eyes, but it does seem to make a difference. Takes a little bit of time. I could have done with tying up half a dozen of these this afternoon, but. Uh, I was overly worried about the technology failing me. But just try and get it all covered up. Why just moving the vice there and scared the bejesus out of me? And then once you're happy, you can come in with your whip finish tool. And finish the fly. Now uh, a lot of still water anglers, especially the small still water anglers, they may only have a floating line, and uh, which is generally fine for most uh, of our small fisheries. But even on small fisheries, I find myself reaching for a fairly fast intermediate to fish this fly, uh, especially if I want to really pull it back at pace. Now to finish it off, before I come in with the super glue actually, I'm just going to slick some of that fibres back. I've got a lighter here just to get rid of some of the the fibres. And what I can do is add the super glue to the head and once this dries uh, the fly is good to go. You can use resin but I just find super glue is a lot tougher and again it's about the fly lasting a bit longer and there we go so hopefully that's the first fly out of the way if you've got any questions on that i'm going to have a look at the chat and then we can move on to the next one these banned on some waters. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Mick, certainly the, the, the still water fisheries that I fish, the, the, there's no problem with them.
yeah, they're worth the... Uh, so, Nigel, uh, <laughs> and I shouldn't really tell you this story, actually, but when I uh, went to Slovenia a few years back now, um, I took my weight forward seven and uh, a few snakes and fished them on the river on the Sava. Uh, I didn't read the ticket um, properly and didn't realise that flies had to be five centimetres or under. Um, it was a little unfortunate. I nearly got all my kit confiscated, but I can tell you now, I didn't have catch a lot of fish um, with a DI-8, thrown it across the river as far as I could and then roly pulling it back. It was uh, unbelievably effective. Yeah, I think, uh, well, I was supposed to be joined today, Mick, by uh, Steve Cullen on, on the test and uh, he was going to have to make a six hour trip, round trip, and uh, we decided against it in the end, but hopefully we'll get on it again before the before too long. Uh, lots of bigger fish being caught since the thaw. Now we're mostly on lures, but a lot get caught on dries. Yep, you can still get a bit of dry fly sport, even at this time of year, especially now it's got a bit milder. Uh, I had a great Christmas, thanks Simon, spent it with the family and uh, my next door neighbours, we had a lovely day, thank you. Hi Colin, uh, I'm pleased to see you've joined me, I, I don't know what time it is there, it must be either very late or very early, I would think. Right, so uh, if there's no more questions about the snake fly, uh, I'll move along to the next fly. Now, obviously, before this uh, goes in the box, it'll be getting the uh, the pliers treatment to remove that that little uh, hook at the, front, at the front here. So I'll just move that to the side. I've just got to reorganise myself, so please bear with me, folks, while I grab the next fly. Now, so that's that's one way of skinning the cat, if you like, F uh, small still water fishing. If you if you don't own uh, an intermediate line, I would suggest it's it's worth the investment, and uh, a lot of the guys. Even the pleasure anglers, I know a lot of them will have two rods. One will be set up with a, an intermediate line and the other with a floating line. So it's definitely worth them um, doing. So the next fly I'm going to show you, uh, I'll just put an example in the vise. And this is a great um, winter pattern. It, it works well any time of year actually, but in the winter it works particularly well. Uh, and it's a, it's a booby fly. Uh, for those in the States, uh, you might not be as familiar with boobies, they're, they're more a UK thing, but the the gold butt uh, cat boobies, it, it scores massively. This is, this is tied to international rules, this one, so it can be fished in competitions here in the UK. So I'm just going to take that out, uh, that's what we're going to tie next. Now the hook. I'm going to put in the vise. Is a Hanak 230 barbless hook. It's at size 10. Now this one uh, is on a medium wire, and and there's a good reason that I use this ahead of the the 200, which is is tied on a heavy wire. What you want from your your booby fly is uh, maximum movement. So and you'll get that the lighter hook you use. Now, you've got to temper the lightness of the hook with the strength of the fish you're fishing for. So, this is, although it's a medium wire, it's still quite a strong hook. Now, the thread I'm going to be using for this is classic wax thread. Um, it's at 6 saw, and as you can see, it's a lime green colour. Now, notice on the camera, it, um, it looks a lot paler than it is. It's a really bright green, this. So, uh, I'm using some uh, comp candy, Marabou here. Uh, this is white, but I have got uh, some pink mixed mixed in with the bag because uh, I tie a lot of 
candy floss boobies which is my preferred uh, uh, small booby and uh, I just keep all the marabundas together it's just uh, easier so I'll just put that to the side and I've got the feather here now booby flies they get a lot of hate and, and the reason they get a lot of hate is people simply don't fish them correctly uh, and I've seen this uh, a lot and it, it's worrying actually because it is going to get them banned now what do I mean by people don't fish them correctly well I've seen anglers actually cast out their fly put the rod down and then wander off get a flask go and talk to their mate the next thing they go back oh I've got a fish but the fish has eaten the fly and it's in its stomach it's too far down um, and I have seen anglers trying to put them back they've got no chance you know the fish are going to die if you fish a booby correctly you'll hook it in the mouth because you'll be on your rod you'll be in contact with your flies and, and you'll catch them it's as simple as that so let's get on to uh, tying this I've lost my thread here it is now because I'm using a classic wax thread I'm just going to add a little bit of beeswax I'll get the gags on again I'm going to catch my thread just in behind the eye here and I'm going to use the rat's tail to guide my thread down and touching turns. Now as I get towards the point, just when I've got past the point, I'm going to take that away. And the first thing I'm going to add is my tail. So I've got my marabou here and I want to take from my thumbnail to my thumb as a rough guide. Now obviously if you've got hands like shovels that'll be a lot more than my little baby like hands but uh, you'll get to know what works for you. So I'm going to take the waste off over my waste basket there. I'm going to catch that in probably not the entire length of the shank. I'm leaving a little bit of space just at the front of the eye here. Uh, and I can catch that in. Now this time with my thread, I'm going to come all the way back to where a barb would be on a barbed hook. I'm going to come in with my thumb and forefinger and pinch the marabou. Now, I'm not a big fan of cutting marabou. Some people say you should never cut marabou, but is it really that important? I'm not so sure. I mean, I think a lot more important things other than even the fly patterns you're using uh, contribute to you catching fish rather than patterns. But types of patterns can make a difference, especially in the winter. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add in the gold butt. And what I'm using here, although I don't have the packet anymore, is some Dave Downey's Fritz. This is the same stuff that, uh, well, I do have the packet actually because it's in the packet with a humongous, which uh, is the same as what I'm using here for the gold butter cap. Now, try and be frugal with this material. I haven't got very much of it left. So I'm going to try and be a little careful with what I'm using here. Try and stretch it out. So I'm going to get maybe two or three tons of it just in at the butt. And once I've got that where I want it, I can bring my thread back and then catch that in on my side. A couple of tons in front and then I can just come in with my scissors and remove the gold butt. I'm going to just get a good solid bed of thread down there, cover that marabout. And that's looking not too bad. Now I'm just going to pause, see if there's any questions on this one. Yeah, Rob, I think that's true, but um, not in the summer when I was there, unfortunately. I was very lucky to talk my way out of keeping my gear. 
<laughs> uh, the Gareth, you you remove the front hook, so if I just uh, I'm looking for one I've maybe already done. Yeah, so the this one here, Gareth, at the front of the fly, and then what you've got is, in fact, I'll just do it. Cover your eyes, folks. I'm just going to do this over my waste basket. Never usually ends up in a waste basket. So there we go, Gareth. That's what the fly looks like once it's uh, it's been snipped off. If that, oops, it's in the way there. Look, it's going to eat that booby. <laughs> yeah, I hope that. Um, maybe if, yeah, so it's the front end of the fly that gets taken off. I hope that makes some sense. Uh, yeah, cat whisker booby. Uh, the addition of the gold butts. I, I say it's relatively new, but um, it's been years now. I've been using it for years. Can you still get the trout stalker dubbing? Now, uh, I've I've had a lot of questions about the Andrew Ellis's trout stalkers dubbing. It's uh, still one of my go-to dubbing patterns, and I use it a lot in my time videos. Unfortunately, Andrew's got involved in local politics and. He doesn't really have the time that he used to have to um, be doing his dubbing material. So unfortunately, he's not um, he's not doing it as much as he used to. Hi, uh, Kai UK Irish Rock Flying. The red is good over here. Yeah, you won't be disappointed, uh, Colin. It's it's very good. This this one's excellent. I've not seen a whiskey being poured yet. You feeling okay? Mick, I've had uh, more whiskey than you can shake a stick at and uh, a bad bout of gout I might add so I'm kind of, I've got a pint of water here so uh, cheers Water and I ibuprofen I'm feeling okay now but I was limping around with the dog for a while Anyway, let me get on with this I've just noticed the time actually I can't believe how long it's taken and uh, we might well not get um, four flies done but uh, I'll, I'll give you a choice for the last one so next then uh, I'm going to add in my chenille and what I've got here is uh, I think this is called uh, worm chenille it's from Semplify now I don't know how well you'll be able to see on the camera but it's green but it's got some sparkle through it now what I want to do is just take away a little bit of the chenille and then I'm going to add that tag to the shank of the hook. Bring it all the way up to the front. Now, you'll notice I'm leaving quite a lot of space here. And you need a lot of space uh, with booby flies. And then I can bring that over like so. Four turns usually does it for this size. And I can come in and catch for two or three turns. And I'm going to get two or three turns in front. And then I can take my chenille away. Excuse my fingers. Now, <clears throat> um, so fishing this fly, um, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Now, it works great skating across the top, believe it or not. So, similar to the snake fly, if you've got a, if you're at a still water that's been freshly stocked, you can put it on your floating line, skate it across the top, and you'll get plenty of interest doing that. Now, the wing, I'm just going to add, again, thumb, thumb to nail. And that works a treat. Now, if you're at a fishery, now, all the fisheries I go to, my local fisheries, so Manningford and Albury Estates, you're only allowed to fish one fly. So it does limit your options. If, you, if you're at a fishery um, that allows multiple flies or teams, then this can also work as a really good fly as the point of a washing line setup. Um, 
and even even on the big still waters, I I, um, I like to use this as my point fly when I'm fishing maybe a team of dial backs on a washing line. So I've just added a little bit of wax. I'm going to bring my wing in, catch it in. Just some nice loose loose wraps initially, and then I can really get get down onto it like so. And that's looking pretty in proportion now. Again, I want to come in with my thumb and forefinger, pinch my marabou, and I want it to be roughly the same length as the tail. I don't get overly excited if it's slightly shorter or slightly longer. So another way that you can use this fly is on a sinking line. Now, in the winter months, obviously what you're going to have is that the, the thermocline, the fish are going to be much more comfortable near the bottom of the lake bed. So fish in a fast sinking line such as a DI7, a DI8 and a very short leader. So, and, and people can't believe how short I'm talking about here. So I'm talking about a foot. So this, that, it's not much. Uh, but if, if you know the lake bed and you know that it's quite clear at the bottom, the fish will be cruising in at that depth and take it. Now, you've got to be very careful when you're fishing it this way. Always be in touch with your fly, and every now and again, just give it a long pull, which makes it go down, and then it will slowly float back up, and very often that's when it will get hammered by uh, patrolling trout, looking for an easy meal. So, next thing then, we're going to add in our eyes. Now, I've got my little uh, Tic Tac here, if you've never seen how I've got to this stage before, there is a video on it and once I've cut this video up, I'll stick a little info card up in the top right hand corner of your screen, showing you how I get to this stage. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more wax and I'm just going to wrap my thread once around, then twice around and then I'm going to wrap up my booby eye until it comes on top of the fly. Then I can figure a V over the eye. Four or five turns generally does it each way. Excuse my fingers. Get a couple of turns in front. Then I can come in with the whip finish tool, pull everything back, and once you've finished that off, simply come with your scissors and snip it away. Now, to finish this fly, what I like to do is get some super glue here, and I like to open up. Split the eyes with my thumb and forefinger and just get a dab of super glue in between the eyes. Then I'm going to turn it on its back and just where I've got my thread, I'm going to add a lot of super, a lot, a dab of super glue to the, uh, the underside. And there is the gold buck cat. Now I've got a video on the channel already with with this fly, uh, but I wanted to include it in this winter selection if you like because it's it's just so good. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to go back to my normal gags so I can read the comments. And I hope uh, you're enjoying it so far, folks. Hopefully, I've still got a picture. <laughs> Got to get sorted, go pump some worms. Uh, best of luck with that, Mick. It can't be too cold up your way if you're rushing out to pump worms. Carp. 
Yeah, I, I, had, a, I had my first go at uh, fly fishing for carp, Ralph, uh, but I used like a, a trim deer hair pattern and uh, that, that seemed to work a treat. Now, we've, we've only got sort of, well, I've only got 10 minutes or so left, so I had two flies ready. Uh, I'll show you them both and you can let me know what you'd like me to go through. Uh, was there, if there's any other questions about fishing the booby, uh, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer. So it can either be this fly, which is a puddle bug. Uh, again, another thing that works particularly well in the winter months, obviously, is the bung. Uh, it can be super effective uh, and sometimes it's the only way of catching fish, uh, some of these small still waters. But, uh, so the puddle bug or uh, the other one I had prepared but I'm not going to have time for is uh, the humongous. So you let me know. What one would you like me to do, guys? Is the chat broken? <laughs> I'm just getting a wall of silence here. Okay, no preference at all. Right, I'm going to tie the humongous because I really like it. Oh, pearl bug, the bug, the bug, the puddle bug. Okay, I wanted to do the humongous as well. Okay, the puddle bug it is. So let me just get reorganized for that. and get I could do a bigger bigger bench bigger studio I need a bigger studio Jane I think that one we've just put in the garden should be mine I don't know no chance no chance Okay, so the hook that um, the one in the example there is it's it's obviously too big. So as you can see, it's it's well you might not be able to see, but it's massive. Um, the reason I'm using this is because my eyes are, are completely shot. So I've got it on a size eight, but you want to be tying these down to a size I would say between a ten to fourteen. But we're going to tie it on an eight so I can see it better. in the base you want the humongous bug puddle bug yeah there might be something in that Stuart I'll have a think about it okay gags back on again as I get through the stages I will try and uh, take the gags off and, and put my glasses on so I can see if there's any questions now the hook I'm using here is uh, a Hanak H310. It's a really heavy gauge hook. I don't know, it's difficult to see on camera, but it is, it's solid. Uh, it's like a carp hook actually. Now I'm going to be using two different colours of flosses here. And the first one is uh, the green floss at 2 aught. Again, it's a, it's from Semperfy, but you can use um, Glowbrite if you wish. And the head of the fly is the cream. Same detail from Semperfy, but it's cream. So what I'm going to do to start off with is add a few wraps. I'm going to just come back on myself. Then I can take away my rat's tail. Now, the, thre the, the tail of this fly... Um, I couldn't tell you where to get it, so don't ask me. I was very kindly given this by uh, a fellow tyre 
who was kind enough to send me some and uh, what what it's called is perfect rubber and it's a very springy like it's like um, flexi it's like flexi floss but it's it's different it's hard to explain actually so it's like flexi floss but not quite the same so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay I folded it in half and I'm going to lay a strand sorry two strands on top of the shank hook and then I'm going to get a few wraps in and then as I start to come down the hook I'm going to just stretch that to make it nice and thin try and keep them together if you can now the further I go down the more pressure I want to get on that perfect rubber and I'm going to stop there now at this point I'm coming with my scissors and remove the excess at the top here now you don't have to add a wire rib but I uh, I just added a gold rib because uh, I thought it looked better there is not really a requirement to do this but it's uh, 0 0.01 millimeters and it's gold and I'm going to catch it in on my side just trying desperately to go your way and then as I come up what I want to try and do is encourage that taper now you help yourself out a little bit with the, the perfect rubber by keeping it nice and supple at the start and then as you get down the bottom you can uh, really stretch it thin so you get that nice taper going on so I'm happy enough with that I'm going to come in with my whip finish tool and just cast that off so that's us done with the green and at this point I'll just stop and get the gags back on uh, see if there's any questions <clears throat> uh, I'll switch to Christmas lights on June uh, that was a deeply burning question on everyone's mind whether our Christmas lights were going to be on as soon as this um, live stream's finished we'll, we'll chat about the office <laughs> Uh, is the perfect rubber round in cross sections? No, it, it's round, so it is. Uh, if I, if I can show you. You can see it's it's round. Uh, can you see that? I don't know how well you'll see it actually. Yeah, and it's not it's not in cross sections. It's one piece. <clears throat> I think it is pro produced by hairline. I have read for apps. Send me some, Stuart, because I really like this and I've not seen the red. Okay, so everyone seems happy enough with, with the materials that I'm using thus far. So, take my glasses off. And there'll be a little bit of time at the end, not much, I might add. Uh, time's wearing on uh, for a few questions. But for the rib, I'm just going to come up. Keep it fairly evenly spaced. As it gets up near the top and you find you forgot to add your next bit of floss so hopefully that will stay and behave and I'll pick up my uh, other bit of floss here so let's see if I can catch that on and I'm going to just take away the rat's tail off the cream And then uh, 
once I'm happy that's secured I can grab the wire here and just twist it away just continue pressure I'll twist that away bring it round to the front and what I want to do is just keep it nice and smooth I think uh, this pearl bug probably the idea or the inspiration for it and it's and uh, I take no credit for this flag uh, this was shown to me uh, I think it was Steve Cullen showed me it actually but uh, it probably comes from the okie dokie uh, which is a, a Scottish pattern that back in the day uh, it did get banned and, and the best way of fishing it was obviously under an indicator or a bun if you like so I'll just snip that away now, next thing then is, depending on what length you want it, I like it when I fly this size, about an inch and a half. And what I would do next is coat the fly in super glue. Just a thin layer. And as I'm doing this, I know for a fact that I've left my UV resin in the house. Because uh, because I'm out in my, my office here, uh, it gets really cold and resin and any years that I've got um, outside spaces for tying in the winter months, you'll probably find your resin goes to goo. Um, and, and a way of uh, preventing that is keep it indoors uh, like I've done and forgot to bring it out with me or you can simply give it a boiling hot bath and uh, I don't mean empty the contents of your expensive um, UV resin into a hot tub of water I mean put the bottle in a small dish of boiling water give it a couple of minutes and it will uh, it will go back to its liquid state and be and be easy to use again. So, unfortunately, this glue is going to take far too long to dry. Uh, if we had more time, I, I would let it dry and then I would add the eyes, as I have done here, with some black UV UV resin or. I would use uh, a couple of blobs of black varnish and just set it to the side to dry. Now, you can fish this under the under the bung. I have fished it, just retrieving it with a figure of eight, and uh, it's worked a treat as well. But uh, under the bung, and I find, especially small still waters, the best um, the best sort of depth is between three and a half and four feet and when the uh, stocked fish are in the pens that's the kind of depth they're cruising at so they're always going to get to see this fly so at this point I'm happy to take any questions I'll have a quick quick look and we're, we're only four minutes over so I've got a wee bit of a wee bit of time I the red wraps I missed the start great to see a live feed again Thanks Mick, um, I was just killing time till you got here. Uh, Mondale. Sorry Kieran, um, I'm not with you. Mondale, you'll need to elaborate on that. No, oh, Kindale on eBay sell it. Right. Looks like micro rubber legs. I get it from Kindale. They do it in different colours. Thanks Kevin, I'll, I'll certainly have a look at that. Kindale. Uh, you're very welcome Bob I hope you have uh, a grand new year and you don't kick the ring out it like I usually do <laughs> uh, Solaris recommend 10 seconds in a microwave I'll tell you what Colin uh, uh, and this is a true story so I've got my Solaris uh, a friend of mine said stick it in the microwave it'll be fine I stuck it in the microwave, forgot all about it, the brush melted off and when I took the cap off I didn't have my little brush. So now I just put it in the water and uh, it's perfectly safe. 
I'm just not safe sometimes, that's the bottom line. Oh, with a lid off. Yep, well done, Roger. I was near that bright. Oh, congratulations, Colin. That's a fantastic fish. On the black booby. Yep, black. Black's good. This black and green's a good colour combination, actually. It's uh, uh, that scores dividends in the winter. I used to actually in the in the spring months. I used to uh, fish black and green flies a lot, but I found over the years, the spring now, and I'm talking about April, it, it doesn't seem to be that cold anymore. Hi Ed, Idaho, uh, good still water fishing in Idaho? Sorry, the, obviously the chat's a wee bit um, slower here. I've not got the the quickest of um, internet connections, but I'm just pleased that this time round, it's you've been able to see and hear me. Uh, it was no fun last time watching it pile in, especially after I'd uh, almost tied the, the first fly. A good UV torch. Um, I could, uh, Colin, I'm using... I use the, I've got several UV torches because I was going to do a video comparing different UV torches and I just never got round to it and um, the what so I use two UV torches I use one from Uphaven which is like a little small grate for traveling you know sometimes I go away and I do fly tying demonstrations for clubs and taking that away is great the other one I use I think is still on my bench somewhere no, it's not, um, but it's it's much bigger, and it's got a rechargeable battery, which I quite, quite like. But what I would say to you, Colin, is check out the video that Reese uh, Wadley did recently about gift ideas for Christmas, and he showed something, it was like a, it was like a light for tying, but it was a UV light that sort of clamps to your device, and you just switch it on above the fly. Uh, and I'm seriously considering picking up one of them. It, it looks really good. Um, I've tried nearly every UV torch on the market and they're much of a muchness. And, and the resins, they're, they're, all, they're all pretty good nowadays, but the reason I use the Solaris Bone Dry, which I've left in the house, is that it comes with a little brush, which is excellent for applying to small flies or if you've got to be precise with your um, placement of the resin the brush just makes that really easy oh, I'm glad to hear it Ed uh, uh, I had a little bit of fishing earlier in the year in America it was fantastic on uh, in Michigan uh, superb really enjoyed it uh, you really you're really spoiled over there I, I love the way that you buy a state license and you get to go and fish wherever you like and it was really heartening to see so many kids fishing and families out for, you know, that they're out, picnic, beer, uh, the whole nine yards. It was great to see. I wish we had that sort of thing in this country. Thanks very much, Gareth. Well, Nigel, you can always send that Solaris to me if it's affecting your health. I wouldn't want to see that, mate. I'll... I'll PM you my address and you just send whatever you've got to me and I'll I'll make good use of it, pal. <laughs> Hi Patrick, I, I've fished in Northern Ireland a few times and um, I've not had the chance to visit Southern Ireland but I'm hoping to correct that uh, in this coming year and, and I might get a chance of a wee fish. A, a lot of my friends now, they've uh, from my days of competition fishing, if, I don't know, I think it must be a phase that anglers go through, you know, you, you learn to fish, you get a wee bit better, you go into competition fishing, and eventually you realise that actually there's a lot more to fishing than, than just doing the competitions, and a lot of my pals now, they're going uh, over to Ireland in the Mayfly, and they're fishing the big lochs like Lean and... Uh, 
Killarney as you see there and, and, and catching fantastic wild brown trout and it does look amazing uh, but there's there's so much I want to do in fishing uh, I just hope I can fit it in at some point right folks I think uh, I, I might be uh, I might have kept you over, over the, your time limit your wife will be wanting to see EastEnders no doubt or uh, the husbands might want to see EastEnders depending on how you're how you like your uh, TV. Uh, I'm glad it's been of some use, Stuart. Uh, the whole idea is to to help people improve their fishing where I can. I mean, I've always said to folks, I, I'm not an expert. I, I just really love fishing. and I want to encourage as many people as possible to try and give it a go. Um, you don't have to do the whole nine yards. It was never something I thought I would end up doing. You know, I, I started off fishing still waters, then got into the lock style, and then got into the rivers. And, you know, just recently I've started to, to fish for, <laughs> I was going to say fish for Xander, but I've never caught one of them yet. But I have been fishing for pike, and, you know, I've been away salmon fishing this year. It's been a, it's been a real mixed bag, and you know? I've thoroughly enjoyed the, the journey. And I still, there's very... There's not very much that I don't enjoy as long as it involves a fly rod and good company. Okay, uh, uh, all that's left then is to wish you all a very happy and healthy new year and I hope you can get out fishing very soon. So with that, tight lines for 2023.